In the 18th century, Dublin was among the most ambitious and sophisticated cities in Europe. It incorporated the very latest trends into its architecture and it achieved some spectacular results. I'm standing on Merrion Square, a place that must count as among the most beautiful expressions of the spirit of that age in Dublin. During this time, known as the Georgian period, the sixth Viscount Fitzwilliam of Merrion owned a vast estate stretching from here, Merrion Street, all the way to the Dublin Mountains. Fitzwilliam dreamed about developing his lands, but he had a problem. They were in the least fashionable part of town. His opportunity arose when Ireland's foremost aristocrat, the Earl of Kildare, unexpectedly decided to build his new townhouse here, at the edge of Fitzwilliam's estate. Gradually, fashionable society followed the Earl, and Fitzwilliam capitalised on this by laying out Merrion Square in the 1760s. The square developed gradually, beginning on the north side and proceeding clockwise. Typically, each builder would construct two or three houses. This explains the variety in parapet heights on the square. Unusually for Georgian houses in Dublin, granite is used to face some of the houses at ground floor level. Fitzwilliam owned both stone quarries and brickworks on his lands, and it is thought that he provided the builders of Merrion Square with these materials. In the 19th century, some prosperous residents added elaborate wrought iron balconies to their houses. The 19th century saw some of the square's most famous residents. The great statesman Daniel O'Connell lived at number 58. The surgeon William Wilde and his wife, the poet known as Speranza, moved into number one along with their infant son, Oscar. The Gothic novelist Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu also lived on the square at number 70. In the 20th century, the poet W.B. Yeats lived here at number 82 while the mystic artist and poet George Russell worked at number 84. In more recent times, the late fashion designer Sybil Connolly had a home and studio at number 71. The west side of Marion Square is dominated by the rear garden of Leinster House. It was here, in 1853, that Irish railway tycoon William Dargan organised a vast industrial and art exhibition. It was in the flush of enthusiasm following this exhibition that two great Marion Square institutions were established, the Natural History Museum and the National Gallery of Ireland. The gallery in particular is synonymous with Merrion Square and is home to one of the world's great collections of old masters. Change came to Merrion Square in 1933 when the largest house, Antrim House, was demolished to make way for the National Maternity Hospital. In 1972, number 39, was burnt down in response to the events of Bloody Sunday in Derry. The largest change proposed for the square was in the 1920s, when the park was acquired as a site for the Catholic Cathedral. This plan fell through, and the lands were donated to Dublin City Council. They now form one of Dublin's most intimate public parks. It's still possible on Merrion Square to get a sense of this part of Dublin in its Georgian heyday. It's a tribute to the quality of these houses that they've been in continuous use ever since. Marion Square was built by Irish people who saw no limit to Dublin's creative and cultural potential. I think it should continue to inspire us to create the very best city of Dublin we possibly can.